So what a thrilling way to get us off on finals day here today with that wonderful mixed doubles. Next up is the all-Japanese women's singles final and the only final not featuring a left-handed player. Then we've got the men's singles with the left-handed Lin Dan, the two-time former champion and reigning Olympic champion up against Victor Axelsson, who's competing in his fourth Super Series tournament final today, but still looking for his first ever title. Then we'll have women's doubles, and last up, we will have men's doubles. But with women's singles about to come onto court, there's going to be a lot of changes to this uh, list next week. Carolina Marin will remain at number one. Sina Newell will go down to number three, because Wang Shoshian will go up to two. Now, the two finalists from today, Okuhara, win or lose, will go up to number six, and Yamaguchi, who's currently not on that list, she's currently at 12, will come in at number nine. Also into that top tone will come the Olympic champion, Li Shui Rei. So we're going to have a totally different list in a week's time. So here come the players. Japan, Nozomi Okuhara. Akane Yamaguchi, there she is, Japan. the former Akane champion. Yamaguchi. Nozomi Okuhara. Both these players have won gold medals at the World Junior Championships. And Nozomi Okuhara won in 2012 and beat her opponent of today in that final. Since then, Akane Yamaguchi has won two consecutive World Junior titles. And of course, two years ago, Yamaguchi, as a qualifier, caused a sensation as a 16-year-old when she won this Japan Open title. Just 18 years of age, Akane Yamaguchi. Nozomi Okuhara, 20 years of age. My goodness, what a wealth of talent we've got emerging from Japan in the women's singles discipline. Estonia. So our court officials also being introduced to the fans. Mm -hmm. 
Susan Taylor from Australia will be the umpire and Iris Smitspalu of Estonia will be the service judge. So Susan Taylor, toss of the coin and it's interesting that Nozomi Okuhara chose ends. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please note that flash photography is not allowed. Make sure to turn your flashlight off before the matches start. Thank you for your cooperation. So, Kane Yamaguchi, number 10 in the world ranking at the moment. She has been one place higher than that, as I was saying. She's number 12 on the Super Series list at the moment, but she will come into the top 10 as number 9 after this week. Her win-loss record for the year indicates that this is her first final of the year. She's had a couple of semi-finals prior to this. But when you look at the batches so far, she's beaten three seeded players. In the first round, Sung Ji Hyung, the World Championship bronze medalist. She defeated her in two straight games. Then in the quarterfinal, the Olympic champion, the defending champion here, the number three seed, Lee Shui Rei, needed three games there. And yesterday, in the semi-final against the former world number one, Wang Shexian, saved four match points before coming through in an hour and 23 minutes. So to the 20-year-old from Nagano, where the Winter Olympics took place in 1998, number nine on the world ranking at the moment. She's won three titles this year, Malaysian Grand Prix gold, China International, that was in fact two titles in two weeks, and the US Grand Prix gold as well. Now she has been two seeded players, former world champion Ratchuk Inton on the number five seed, needed three games there. Uh, then her teammate Mitani, an hour and 23 minutes for that. And yesterday's semi final against 2012 winner, the number four seed Tai Su Ying. That was an hour and three minutes. Well, it says four and zero. That's not actually quite right. It's only two and zero because matches from junior badminton should not count in the statistics. But the point is that uh, Yamaguchi has never beaten Nozomi in international competition. And I think that's the most important thing to take from the head-to-head. -head. So there, Iris Metzpalu of Estonia, our service judge. Susan Taylor, as I was saying, our umpire from Australia. And it's only two years ago since we had an all-Japanese women's singles final here. When, of course, Okane Yamaguchi has a qualifier, beat another player who had started in the qualifying event, Ladies Shizuka Uchida. On my right, Okane Yamaguchi, Japan. And on my left, Nozomi Okahara, Japan. Kane Yamaguchi to serve. Love all. Play. Well. An all Japanese women's singles final, and there's an awful lot at stake. It's the number nine ranked player in the world against the number 10 ranked player at the world. I suppose the question mark in my mind is how both these athletes have recovered after their wonderful semi-final victories yesterday. Yukane Yamaguchi's match against the former world number one, Wang Shoshian, where she had to come from 6-11 down and 9-14 down in the deciding game before winning 26-24 an hour and 23 minutes, saving four match points in the process. It's not only the physical tiredness from a match like that, but I wonder if emotional tiredness will come into it as well. Service over. One, two. Oh. Of 
course physically. Okuhara has had three consecutive matches that have gone to three games. Yamaguchi only two. Well, of course, Oko Hara, this is her second Super Series tournament final. She reached the final in Hong Kong in only her sixth Super Series event. Good luck, Rally. Yamaguchi. Has been in two previous Super Series tournament finals, so this is her third. Not only winning the Japan two years ago, reached the final of the China Premier Super Series at the end of last year, having been promoted from the qualifying event. It's very interesting that the two Japanese players have got their club coaches on the coaches' bench. National coaches staying out of the way. Oh dear. Going wide. Oh. Yep. Six, five. Yep, there we are. That's the coaches for Okuhara. She looks a little bit nervous, doesn't she? Not only really that shot, that error. Also looks a little bit nervous in her face. Oh, that's delightful. What a glorious drop shot. She's a great retriever of the shuttle, is Okuhara. And such was the disguise, she couldn't reach that one. We were noticing that yesterday in the semi-final. 
Yamaguchi's disguise with her overheads, her drop shots. There's another. That short. Oh, my goodness, good defense. Oh, it's called goods. Well, she's going for the disguise, and I guess that she knows that her opponent, Okohara, is such a good retriever of the shuttle that she's trying to make it as tight as possible to the net. And in trying to make the perfect drop shot, she's making one or two errors. Right back level, nine all. Yeah, and again, going for the line, overdoing it. That. So the advantage, albeit just one point, is with Okuhara. It's always very difficult when two players from the same nation play against each other. They know each other's games so well. And the fans, of course, don't know who to cheer for. showing their appreciation of some very good badminton and of the fact that it's two Japanese players on court. Yeah, that really is some fancy strapping on the back of Okuhara's legs.
is that disguise drop again? Super. Lovely angle there and change of pace from Nozomi Okuhara. Well, in the first game of Yamaguchi's semi-final yesterday, she was absolutely dictating the pace. She's not been allowed to do that today in the final. Indeed. Hovers round the net, waiting for the net shot return, and then just launches herself to make that kill. Brilliant. Okuhara a complete injustice yesterday. I talked so much about her athletic ability and her court coverage. I failed to recognize what great racket skills she's got as well. Gucci is being pushed and pulled all over the court by this young lady, Okuhara. Clear, it's because it's played with disguised. You look as if you're going to hit in the downward direction, and then you just punch through with the racket head, causing the deception, keeping the shuttle low. It's an attacking shot rather than an offensive shot, even though it's a clear to the back of the court. Oh, 
she came back yesterday in that final game of her semi-final did Yamaguchi from a five-point deficit. from Okuhara. 18-16. First of all, coming forward and then getting back to play the smash straight down the line. Court coverage, surely. Yeah, well, much better to leave it, in my opinion. She could have done herself some serious damage there. clear well the physical effort and the mental determination there from okuhara to get right behind the shuttle to once again hit a winning smash straight down the line three game point opportunities Turn of the high serve, played with disguise, slicing across the feathers. And 21-18 in 20 minutes. The score confirmed by the umpire. Well, only two players have ever won a women's singles super series title from Japan. Yamaguchi, there she is, one of them. And the first ever player to win a super series title with me. Natsu Mitani winning the 2012 French Super Series. So if Okuhara was to win, she'll become the third Japanese player to win a women's singles Super Series title. This is interesting. Okuhara in her semi final against former champion Tai Su Ying. Well, an awful lot of smashes down the forehand side. Oh, that's much, much more even from Yamaguchi in her semi final. And a lot more smashes from Yamaguchi against 
of the former world number one, Wang Shuxian. That is interesting. Only one body smash. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Well, Yamaguchi's coach, Mr. Kobayashi, from her high school, which is the Katsuyama High School, where she studies. He's on the coaching bench Second for her. Oh, that's nice. Well, we saw those stats from Hawkeye just a moment ago about the number of smashes that Yamaguchi hit in her semi-final. I wonder if she's going to be a little more aggressive now here in this second game. Whether she'll be allowed to be more aggressive is another matter. Good. Good command of the rally from Okuhara. Absolutely dictating the pace. Look at that lovely slice. No, we were talking yesterday about the speed about the court of Yamaguchi. That is matched today by Okuhara. There's no doubt about that in my mind. And I also do wonder whether well, Yamaguchi's legs are slightly tired after that marathon match yesterday. Now, she is trying to attack more, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, slower to recover. Yeah, definitely struggling after yesterday's semi-final against Wang Shaxian. This is a long, long, grueling rally. Got to be the longest of the match so far by some considerable margin. Yeah. Three, Yamaguchi, five. her torso going forward, not just letting the legs do the power work, and therefore slightly slow to recover. Better control on the movement of this lady. has been informed 42 in. shots that last rally it certainly was the longest rally wasn't it so Hawkeye will adjudicate for us here we are yeah good challenge half watching her opponent rather than watching the shuttle.
a lovely smash. Four, four. Yeah, we saw her doing that in the semi-final. into that back corner. the shuttle back, hit the top of the tape, and it landed on the line. Look at that. Extraordinary. Oh my goodness, full pirouette on the backhand. Look at that. And in the end, to no avail. Again to get behind the shot from Okuhara, a forehand corner. Missed it. Yeah. And there's little signs to me that Akane Yamaguchi is beginning to get a little bit frustrated. Can't find the lines, the legs aren't running as quickly as she would like them to run. is a big point. Important. Oh! What a glorious shot. Nine. Suddenly, a change of pace, a change of angle from Okuhara. Catching Yamaguchi unawares. Yeah, that must have been pretty long too, yeah, 32. We have had one at 42, though. This is five straight points for Okuhara. And Mr. Kobayashi 
Looking a little bit concerned. He'll be very concerned now, but he's got the opportunity to talk to Yamaguchi. Give his advice. Six straight points for Okuhara. Definitely wide, wasn't it? No question. I'm not convinced that Okahara was trying to leave it. Seconds. I think she was trying to play it. Couldn't seconds. reach it. Mm -hmm. Luckily for her, it went down. First and foremost, Yamaguchi needs to stop this run of points by Okuhara. No, the run of points continues because that's missed as well. There's just it's shots like that that yesterday she was making. Today she's not making it because she's slightly later onto the shuttle, getting herself not in the best position to play the smash. That's nice. There's a challenge. There's a challenge here. It was called in. Yamaguchi challenges. Yamaguchi oh. thought it was out. I wonder if that's a sign of the desperation from Yamaguchi. Service over 13 7. Yamaguchi has one challenge remaining. Play. Gucci was way out of position. Her backhand cross court net shot was just a desperation shot. Oh, that's lovely. So Delightful. Sacrificing Nine. power for placement. She's missed with her power smashes earlier on today. Yeah, just sacrificing the power, making sure she gets the placement right. Much more effective. Yeah, there's a real spring in the step of Onozumi Okuhara. Nine. 
she can smell victory. Six point advantage. Oh, it's landed in. Backhand serve here. Hey! Oh, it's all good again. Well, I think Yamaguchi was considering a challenge. Players are a little bit reluctant to challenge because there's only two challenges per match. Now, tame resistance now from Yamaguchi. Almost a, a resigned look on her face. Her opponent just three points away from her first ever Super Series title. It's gone wide. Two points away for Nozomi Okuhara in her second Super Series tournament final. Yeah, look, her coach is getting a little bit nervous and also a little bit excited. Wide. Last chance for the former champion Akane Yamaguchi to try and get back on level terms. Time is running out. to bring up match point opportunity. 32 shots in that rally. Eight match point opportunities. Only needed the one. 21-18, 21-12. And a maiden Super Series title for Nozomi Okuhara. Her fourth title of the year, having won the Malaysian Grand Prix Gold, the China International and the US Grand Prix Gold. She reached the final of the Hong Kong Super Series at the end of last year. And now here in Tokyo at the Yonex Open Japan, she takes her first ever 
Super Series title. 41 minutes needed to beat the former champion, Akane Yamaguchi. Well, I suspect the semi-final yesterday that Yamaguchi played uh, against the former world number one, Wang Shaxian, which she eventually won in an hour and 23 minutes, having saved four match points. I suspect that took its physical and emotional toll. But let's not take anything away from this 20-year-old Nozomi Okuhara, because she was superb today. Took the match to her opponent. Yamaguchi takes leave. Okuhara is still centre stage. The local network's going to have a word with her and as we can look at that final point again. Well, Okuhara talking there about the fact that she's never won a Super Series event previously and earlier this year. Uh, she never got past a quarter-final stage, so she's really, really happy, and that's understandable. Well, appreciating the home fans as well in her earlier matches, Okuhara, and it's nice that she mentions the fans because... That's what makes it special for uh, the athletes playing in front of people who appreciate the badminton. So we're about to get ready for the prize presentation for the women's singles. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to have the prize presentation ceremony of the women's singles. The semi-finalist is one season at a time. So the semi-finalists invited on to court Wang Shoshian, the former world number one who had that Tremendous match against Akane Yamaguchi. Two years ago, she was champion. This year, as the second for second best. But Nozomi Okuhara, I wonder if this will be the first of many Super Series titles. The third player from Japan to win for a women's singles Super Series title, following in the footsteps of Minatsu Mitani and the player she beat today, Akane Yamaguchi. The bronze medal and the prize money of 3,987 US dollars and 50 cents are presented to the semi finalist by Mr. Kamisuke Watanuki, the president of the Nippon Badminton Association. Mr. Watanuki, president of the 
Nippon Badminton Association presenting Wang Shoshian with her bronze medal and has beaten the semi-finalist. The silver medal and the prize money of 10,450 US dollars are presented to Akane Yamaguchi of Japan by Ms. Etsuko Tobano, the first women's doubles champion in the first badminton world championships in 1977. What a wonderful touch. Etsuko Togano, who of course was a gold medalist at the first ever World Championships in Malmo back in 1977, presenting the medal to Akane Yamaguchi. The championship plays the gold medal and the prize money of 20,625 US dollars are presented to Nozomi Okohara of Japan by Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamado. So Her Imperial Highness Princess Takamado the uh, presenting the gold medal. We are very honored to have her presence here on finals day. And what a moment for Nozomi Okuhara. a nice touch. The two finalists sharing the top spot of the podium holding the Japanese flag. Her first ever title, uh, 
but she will go up on the Super Series standings to number six after today's victory. Currently at number nine. We'll go up three places and our opponent, Hakana Yamaguchi, will arrive in the top ten of the destination Dubai list and will be at number nine on that list which will be published next week. So great news, obviously, for Japan in the women's singles because with both finalists, uh, they know that Japanese badminton is doing very well in world terms. Okuhara, her first ever Super Series title. Next up is men's singles, then we have uh, women's doubles, and we end with men's doubles with the defending champions from Korea, Lee Yong Dae and Yu Young Sun. So plenty more action to come. And Victor Axelson, like Okuhara, is looking for his first ever Super Series title. Today he'll be competing in his fourth Super Series tournament final, his third this year. So will it be third time lucky as far as 2015 is concerned for Victor Axelson against the two-time former champion, Lin Dan. Well, good news for Japan in the women's singles, as I was saying, and there's good news for Japan in the men's singles because uh, Kento Momota is going to move up to number two, swap places with Jano Jorgensen, who sadly couldn't compete here this year because of illness. Victor Axelson, whether he wins or loses, is going to remain at number four, but Lin Dan will go up to number five with Kashyap Parupali going up to number six, which means that Shrikanth is going to be pushed down to seventh. And the reason that Kashyap 
is going up is because, as you can see, he was a quarter finalist. The other interesting thing, Chow Tian Chen, who made it through to the semi final stage, he's going to enter the top 10 of the Destination Dubai Super Series ranking at number 10 after his semi final performance here. So we're just about ready for the final. Lin Dan of China appearing in his fifth Japan Open final, the two time former champion against the young Dane Victor Axelson. China. The left handed Lin Dan. Two time former champion. Lin Dan winning the title 10 years ago in 2005 and nine years ago in 2006, but he first reached the final here 12 years ago in 2003. For Victor Axelson, the tall Dane, the 21 year old from Odense, the number seven seed this year, a third Super Series tournament final.